What's up, guys? This is Mike Lurus, going to be casting a random JDL league, JDL game that I just happened to join. It's going to be between Team Ehug on the Radiant, Denial Esports on the Dire. They just played, and I didn't actually see who won, I think. No, no, Ehug won. Ehug won game one, I think it's a best of two or something like that. But either way, I've successfully managed to hijack a broadcaster slot, and I am going to be giving you ultra redundant English coverage. But, but the good thing is that you get to hear my brilliance, and that's obviously a giant selling point. Clearly, right? I clearly know what I'm doing. But yeah, Ehug as well as Denial. Not really your Navis or Alliances, but still two of the, I would say, I mean, they're definitely big names, and they're definitely bigger growing names. And that's something, there's something to be said for that. Denial Esports, unfortunately, going to ban out the Ember Spirit, a very, very powerful hero. It's a hero that I want to see more of, but unfortunately these teams just don't want to cooperate with me. They pick, they are, they rather first ban out the Ember Spirit. We also see Slark, Visage, Doom, uh, between the Slark and Doom, very hard heroes to play around. And then uh, we have the picks. Team Ehug going to open up with the Invoker as well as the AA. Been seeing a lot of Ancient Apparition lately. Uh, with the Invoker, it's actually, it's actually pretty nice. You get a whole lot of, uh, you know, high range nukes. With the tornado, with the EMP, which isn't you know the highest cast range, but still between that and the ball, you're just dealing a lot of overall magic damage. And of course, Invoker, if he's going for Wex, which most Invokers nowadays do tend to stray towards that Wex direction, can make very very good use of the Chilling Touch. More damage with the plus attack speed on Invoker. Hell, he can slap an Alacrity on uh, whoever, whatever hard carry, or even the Invoker himself. And then suddenly you're hitting like a truck, moving at near max movement speed. And heroes like Visage and the soft heroes like Marana, they are going to be really, really sad, really, really quickly. Okay, Ancient Apparition, uh, definitely a growing force, and I love it. I mean, Ancient Apparition is one of my favorite support heroes. Ice balls of death flying all about. It's a, it's a really great way to play him, and I think they did, in fact, uh, pick him up in the last game. I just caught the very, very tail end of that one, so I didn't really catch uh, you know most of the action. But it's also the fact that if he gets an Aghanim Scepter, so I usually do play him as a 4-roll, uh, you need him to get some farm. Once he gets the Aghanim Scepter, his killing potential goes through the roof. It is <laughs> the Shatter, uh, the Ice Blast lasts for an obnoxious 17 seconds, up from 10. So pretty much if you land that on any of the supports, like 9 times out of 10, or maybe 8 times out of 10, that's a death sentence. And if you get a global death sentence flying around, yeah, you're in pretty good shape. Denial Esports, on the other hand, picking up the Visage, Marana, as well as the Lifestealer as their third pick. So possibly we'll be seeing a Marana support, given that the Lifestealer pick you know, has been actually entered into this game. Banding out the Weaver as well as Gyrocopter, targeting some of the harder carries for Ehug, whereas Ehug just concerned about protecting their lanes and well, eliminating that Bane as well. Uh, I mean, he's a strong hero with the Marana. The class combination of Bane and Marana is something that you always should, and I, in my opinion, you have to respect it. If you don't, suddenly Nightmare Arrows everywhere. Although Lifestealer, Marana, Visage, it's also a pretty sick combination. Ehug with that Shadow Demon, partially in banning that out from the Marana. Don't want to get hit with an arrow in from an arrow after a disruption. So you know, in case Marana is still going to be played as a core role, which yeah, it's still possible uh, given Denial's lineup right now. Then you don't want to actually go uh, play against that. It's very similar to the Nightmare Arrow, except. Uh, well, I mean, you obviously put him in a big bubble. It's a little bit more... It's not as subtle as the Nightmare Arrow. But at the same time, Shadow Demon as well as Ancient Apparition, a very good combination because once you lay the Cold Feet down, put them in the bubble, put the Curse on them, pretty much as soon as they pop out, unless you really mess up, they're going to instantly get frozen by Cold Feet. And that really is something that's a... Uh, I mean, it's a guaranteed way of making Cold Feet, although it won't do any damage, or it will do substantially less damage than if you just let it tick and if you stun him with, you know, a Hex or a Magic Missile or something like that, then it'll actually pretty much guarantee a Disable. Uh, the question is, what could they do with that Disable? So far, they don't really have much of anything Invoker if he does go for Exhort, which, again, is becoming more and more unlikely as the uh, teams figure out the power of a Wexvoker. Then uh, they'll have a Sunstrike, which is something, I mean, it's pretty much the best global killing tool early on that you could possibly find, so yeah, I would call that something. But uh, the real damage is going to come from whichever carry here they're going to pick up. Gyrocopter would have been the ideal pickup. You put them in a bubble, after cold feeding them, they pop out with the curse on them ideally, frozen, and then Rocket Barrage kills pretty much everything. Of course you can pick up some 
other early game damage heroes. Luna still is in the pool. Yes, she is. And they're actually going to go with the Slardar. It's uh, it's another way to go. I mean, why get the uh, fragile agility heroes when you get the bulk of a Slardar? Kind of the same concept. Put them in a bubble, freeze them with cold feet. Then you have a follow-up stun with Slardar. Later on, of course, when you have the amplified damage, then that combination will be even more devastating. But Slardar, uh, a bulkier pickup, a not as hard of a carry pickup, more of a mid-game oriented hero. It's a decent hero versus the Life Stealer just because Amplified Damage does go through the Life Stealer's Rage, as does the uh, as does the Bash from Slardar. So lots of physical damage. Plus you have the Shadow Demon, uh, gonna drop that Demonic Purge eventually on that Life Stealer. So you know, E Hug, even though they don't have the Bane, which is you know one of the best tools for dealing with Life Stealer, right up there with the Naga Siren in my opinion. Uh, they have tools to deal with the Life Stealer Magic Community. And Denial with their mid lane going to be the Puck. So they fully expect the Invoker to go to the mid lane as he as they should. It is rather uncommon to see invokers go anywhere else. Of course, you do see it occasionally, but then usually they are playing the exhort role. That is a little bit, uh, I, I would call it outdated at this point. But Puck versus Invoker should be a slightly Puck-favored matchup. Shadow Demon, Ancient Apparition can't really do much to gank that Puck, just because, I mean, unless Puck for some reason runs out of mana, which is, I guess, a possibility. But uh, you're... Odds are you're not going to be able to land your perfect combo on Puck just because the Puck has so many ways of defending yourself. Mirana also, like Puck, Mirana, hell, even Life Stealer, going to be very, very difficult to combo out with a Shadow Demon, Ancient Apparition, Slardar, which in, on paper is going to be excellent, but against the heroes that Denial has, not so much. Visage, though, you can get the Visage, you could always count on getting the Visage. Denial looking for their last pickup right now. It's looking uh, like they might run the Mirana as a support with the Visage. It won't be terrible. Although they could just as easily pick up another support, something like a Vengeful Spirit. Set up that Mirana Arrow, then have a Life Stealer solo a lane, or have, even have a Mirana solo lane. Life Stealer's not too shabby in a tri lane, especially when you know the enemies are going to be packing a lot of magical damage in the Ancient Apparition and Shadow Demon, that you could, or a lot of magical effects that you could easily ignore with that Rage. So Denial, they do have the access point for the Life Stealer, both Mirana and Puck. Uh, pretty good vehicles for getting that Life Stealer bomb right into the middle of the enemy team, though uh, Puck definitely a little bit better than the Mirana, having more safety measures than the Mirana. So they'll be able to get the Life Stealer in really, really close. Slardar, though, is going to be perfectly okay with that. No need to sprint anywhere, chase after any stray Life Stealers. Just amplify damage and then try to man fight. I think, uh, depending on the levels, Slardar. Is gonna be is gonna have a tough time man fighting the life stealer until he gets a good amount of attack speed, and then in which case bash plus the amplified damage, amplifying that bash damage, gonna mean that slardar should have a slight edge. But I would say on the whole, life stealer versus slardar, assuming the uh, assuming the rage and crush, and then slardar takes enough damage so that he has to back off before he actually wants to test it for very long. So I mean, like assuming like short fights like that, then life stealer should have the edge. But long extended fights if Slaughter managed to kite if he gets put into a bubble by the Shadow Demon stuff like that then the crush and the guaranteed crowd control is gonna put him ahead Denial going to go for a Disruptor as their last pickup so Murana now going to be one of the farmers on the Denial side along with that Life Stealer and Puck so you have one two three amongst those three heroes Disruptor as well as Visage Disruptor well Silence is always gonna be useful with the Static Storm can't really go wrong with that with a high mobility hero like Slardar Having a glimpse when he's running away, or rather sprinting away, is always going to be pretty useful, though between Puck, Life Stealer, Mirana, there's a lot of chasing power on Denial anyway, so Disruptor pick, as far as that goes, might be a little bit redundant. However, uh, well, actually, I don't know how much I like this Disruptor pick. I mean, they have one stun in the Mirana Arrow, and then two kind of pseudo-stuns, I guess. The Dream Coil is a pretty good one, and the Visage Familiars, all technically stuns. Disruptor doesn't really add anything towards that, although he does keep them within range. There's not a tremendous amount of synergy that the, synergy that the Disruptor has, aside from just mass magical damage th from the Disruptor Puck, then the Star Storm from Mirana. So, uh, either way, they'll have a glimpse, which is an incredibly powerful skill, but there's nothing that they really... There's no key hero that they have to silence. Silencing an Evoker is always very possible, but odds are that's not going to happen. Invoker is going to be dropping his important spells before you actually can get a Kinetic Field Static Storm off. And he's going to be running in with a Tornado, with an EMP, to initiate. And if you're Disruptor, well, that you already got initiated upon, so I guess you could block the follow-up Cold Snap or something like that. But uh, aside from that, well, I mean, uh, well, Ehug at the last pick, 
They made it a little bit better for the Disruptor. Timbersaw is a hero that see, the silence is absolutely going to destroy. Can't go anywhere, can't do much damage to the Timbersaw when you are sitting in that static storm with the kinetic field right on top of you. So e -Hug with the Timbersaw is going to give them a very, very strong offlane, but at the same time is uh, a hero that the, sh the Disruptor is going to get, uh, is going to be that much more useful against. So we are in, guys, my successfully hijacked broadcaster slot. And we are going to see what the lanes are going to shape up as on the e-hug side. We have KX playing the Timbersaw going to head down towards the bottom lane. Looks like it might be aggro lanes from both of them, though maybe not so much for Denial. Reboros is going to be on the mid lane Voker. Picking up a Null Talisman, this build right now signifies more leaning towards an Exhort, though the first skill point is really what is going to be the greatest tell there. Pandego is going to be on the Shadow Demon. Slaughter is going to be played by Jigglebilly. I'm a sheep is going to be on the Ancient Apparition, as expected, the Tri-Lane. Should be pretty dangerous, but Whitebeard on the Life Stealer on the Denial side should be relatively safe against that. Of course, Rage isn't the end-all as far as safety goes, but it will buy him a lot of effective time. Defect is going to be supporting that Life Stealer as the Disruptor up top. Dragon Fist is going to be on the mid-lane Puck. Frums? Yeah? Smurf? It's, in it's entirely backwards, guys! I got it! I'm just going to call him Smurf. He's going to be playing the Moran on the bottom lane along with Exiled as the Visage. Denial looking like they might want to run dual lanes, the, the Disruptor, possibly wanting to move down there. Uh, Denial, they're expecting one hero, the life, the uh, Timbersaw rather, to be up on top, I think. But clearly that's not going to be the case. E-Hug looking to lane this in an aggressive fashion and defect. Got to be careful there, Disruptor. Shadow Demon... Fortunately for that Disruptor, way in the back, so Disruptor is going to walk away with his life. But yeah, as far as dual lanes go, the bottom lane is going to be the Sh Visage as well as Marana versus a Timbersaw. Timbersaw, I mean, you usually have to give him a very large edge in most lanes just because he does have that reactive armor. He has a lot of regeneration, a lot of burst damage, and even if you shut him down, he'll be able to burst you down if you slip up for just a little bit too long. But in this lane, when he's going to be receiving this much poke, it's going to be very difficult for him. The reactive armor is going to be it's so important for him as far as surviving in the lane. Uh, so Smurf, as well as Exile, going to be doing a fairly good job at shutting down this Timbersaw. We'll look at the mid lane. It is going to be an Exhort level 1 for Invoker. Someone's on the top lane. Someone got put into a bubble. It's Whitebeard, though, but smashing that Rage button is exactly what I was get set talking about before. I mean, Disruption, Cold Feet, Slithering Crush. It's uh, technically a great combo but not against the life stealer. It gets a lot weaker in that situation. And Evoker, yes, he's going to go full onto the Exhort. So he wants to stack up this combo on the top side as much as possible. Whenever you see a disruption, you should be able to hit a Sunstrike unless, uh, you know, miscommunication or mistiming or uh, whatever. But I think at teams at this caliber, you would reliably expect to see a Sunstrike hit onto a Disruptor. Then ideally, Soul Catched target. Soul Caught target? I don't know. The top lane is uh, going to be a little bit difficult for Denial. A 2v3 lane is always very rough, and Whitebeard, although he will remain safe on the top lane, uh, Rage at the same time does cost 75 mana out of the total 221 of the Life Stealer. So we can't really afford to do that all the time, whereas the Slardar, I mean, he's picking his battles a little more carefully, and hell, he, he could even hold his crush and while at the same time forcing out the Rage. So either way, he will eventually get the mana advantage there. I'm not really sure why Cake is stutter stepping on the bottom lane, taking a whole bunch of extra right clicks that should not have been taken. But Smurf and Exiled holding down this lane very, very well. Cakes not being zoned out completely, however. He is still getting a couple levels, almost at that level 3 mark. We'll need, I think, uh, with against the opponents that he's up against, probably 5, 6. Once he gets to that range, then he could really do work. Pandego, going to get stunned by a Centaur. That would have was actually unfortunate. I think he probably might have been able to go for Whitebeard. But he's thinking about it regardless. They have full vision this life stealer. And there we go. The bubble is down. The cult chilling touch is up as well. Whitebeard does have his rage. But kinetic field and you shall not pass. Sunstrike will... That looked like it should have hit. But it misses. And Whitebeard just kisses the edge of that Sunstrike. He will walk all the way. Uh, well, he has a salve. So he's, he's going to salve up and be fine. So he didn't spend any mana that time. But at the same time, E-Hug... I mean, they use a Chilling Touch, not a terribly huge deal. They use a uh, Disruption from the Shadow Demon, again, not a terribly huge deal. But effectively, this Life Stealer 7 for 0 versus the 10 for 4 on the Slaughter. Still only a very slight edge in favor of the Slaughter, but still an edge nonetheless. Cake's going to be a little bit aggressive on this bottom lane, but I mean, he does have three Magic Stick charges. Actually, Magic Stick picked up a lot earlier than I would have thought. Not too many spammable spells from the Denial side on the bottom lane. 
But he just does have two Chimmer Chain, two Reactive Armor, and Smurf is getting beaten down quite heavily by Cakes, flexing his muscles on this bottom lane, thinking about throwing another chain. It is going to miss. That's going to put him in a little bit of an awkward situation, but still, six Tangos left on this guy. He's going to juke an arrow, and he's thinking about actually turning around for Smurf, but... They're a little bit too smart. Cakes is uh, he's doing his best. You got to give him credit on this bottom lane for making attempts like this. Forcing out a salve on the Marana is not terrible at all. And he's getting his levels. Level 4, not being locked down as much as I thought, but still only 3 creep kills. Fortunately for the Timbersaw, Timbersaw's not really a hero that you need a lot of gold on. Of course, getting the Arcane Boots is always very helpful. But, uh, you know, if you don't have gold, that's usually fine. You can still burst people down 100 to 0, though you will need a little bit of time in between those uh, that burst damage combination. Take a quick look at the mid lane again. Invoker going for the Exhort should have an increasing advantage over this Puck. Of course, the Puck can kill the Invoker very easily. The Invoker uh, probably won't be able to kill the Puck. He does have a lot more base damage, or he will soon enough. Uh, he does ha have more technically, but he will have a lot more as the lane moves forward, especially with that Forge Spirit adding that additional damage to that bottom lane. Uh, but So he'll get an increasing advantage down there, and he's also... Okay, Skype, I'm going to have to shut you up now. It better not be important. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna quit this for now. We don't want to hear that. I don't even know if anyone's picking that up, but uh, no listening to Skype, no more pinging or whatever. But Invoker should have an increasing advantage over this mid lane, and Dragon Fist also has to leave the mid lane if he wants to help out his allies. Whereas Invoker, obviously with Sunstrike, will be able to not only do stuff like that, lay into the puck and put on a lot of damage, almost for free, only costing him mana. He'll be able to Sunstrike the top lane, or I ideally the top lane. The bottom lane is going to be a lot more difficult to Sunstrike, although still, with the amount of burst damage that Cakes has, is not too out of the question. If he manages to land a Timber Chain, some right clicks onto Exiled or something like that, a Sunstrike, although it will have to be completely freehand, is, uh, is fairly likely to land. Or is possible to land, let's say. Let's not get too ahead of ourselves. The top lane 27 for 11 versus Whitebeard's 14 for 1. He's backing out already. He's only level 3 and level 3 Slardar, AA, as well as a level 3 Shadow Demon. So yeah, this dual lane on the top side for Denial, really, really not working out. You would expect them to have more experience given it's a 2v3 lane, but getting zoned out so heavily, heavily the constant threat of the tri-lane top side is going to force the life sealer all the way back into his jungle. He has a Quelling Blade, so I mean, jungle life sealer is definitely a thing. If you ever played a pub in your life, you would know that. But it's definitely less than ideal. Uh, fortunately for them, Smurf is getting his farm in the bottom lane, though definitely a Murana without with farm. Not as useful, I would say, as a uh, as a life suit with farm. Now Exile can take a huge chunk of damage with the Soul Sumpter going the other way. Arrow, gonna fly through. Cakes is going to be your first blood. It's gonna be drawn by Smurf, getting that point blank arrow. Starstorm also doing some pretty heavy deeps. And the Timbersaw getting a little bit too ahead of himself. I mean, he did do a lot of damage, to be fair. But at the same time, he didn't expect that. I guess he didn't expect the Marana arrow to land. I guess he didn't expect uh, the amount of damage that Soul Assumption does to you know, actually bring him down that low. Level 5 on the Timbersaw. Once he has a Chakra in the lane, will get a lot easier for him, just being able to chip down for free. But, again, without that Whirling Death, forced to get the two points of reactive armor, he's going to be neutered a little bit in this lane. And, of course, Ruboros refusing to help out his buddy. No guaranteed kill, or no even possible kill, with that Sun Strike equals no point. Shadow Demon level 3 has moved down to the spot lane. Smurf does have enough mana for a leap if he gets put into a bubble. No, it's going to be Exiled instead. There's a curse. Is there a Sun Strike? It looks like there's not. Exiled is going to sprint on out of there with that Grave Chill movement speed. And the Mirana is going to leap out as well. No Sun Strike, no reaction at all from Reburos. I guess he didn't have Invoke up or something like that, or maybe he just didn't want to. By the way, Exiled pretty damn quick with actually level 2 in that Grave Chill. So it's going to give them that additional movement speed for that much longer. I think it's just one second. Yeah, just one second longer. But hey, it's something. And now Cold Snap onto Exiled. That Forge Spirit's doing work. And the Sunstrike perfectly on the mark. Denial is going to lose their Visage. And now Ryoboros, he's going to get coiled up. But Dragon Fist, out of mana, can't really pursue this one. Invoker going to salve up. Still very low on mana. But that was the pretty much one Forge Spirit and a level 3 Cold Snap. Absolutely destroying that Visage. Of course, the Sunstrike taking the bulk of his HP. But the Visage going instead for that second point in Grave Chill instead of Grave Keeper's Cloak would have, I don't want to say saved him, but it definitely would have made it a little bit more of a tougher kill for Ryoboros to actually take, given that it does increase his durability when the Forge Spirit was doing probably the most damage. I mean, it'll help you against the physical as well as magical of the uh, Forge Spirit and Cold Snap, respectively. Fortunately, that was not the pickup for the Visage, and it's not going to be the pickup for the next level, nor the next going to go for familiars and then most likely max out soul assumption uh, after straight after that 
So it's going to be a while before this Visage gets uh, really tanky. And he does have lower resistances than other heroes. That was the, uh, I don't want to say it was the latest nerf. It might have been the latest nerf to Visage. It was one of the more recent nerfs to Visage. He has zero armor. I think he has like 10 magic resistance. He has 10 magic resistance, whereas, as we can see from Invoker. And I think every other hero in the game, without exception, 25% uh, is base. So Visage without that Gravekeeper's Cloak is incredibly soft. Yes, he does do a lot of damage, but not when that doesn't matter when you're on the defensive. You're just going to be taking damage, and you just got to run and hope you don't die. And we can see how well that went for Denial in that particular mid lane scenario. Take a look back at the mid lane, 51-14, Slardar with 1,700 gold in the bank. I expect with the amount of farm that Slardar is uh, crewing up on this top lane and the amount of gold he's sitting on right now that it should be a blink dagger going to be picked up from him uh, that way he could easily open up the door for a little bit of aggression if he could jump on someone like the disruptor or you know anyone on this top lane right now visit disruptor very vulnerable to a blink dagger blink into a level 3 crush with level 2 cold feet get that uh, chilling touch on top of that and they're pretty much screwed especially when you factor in a level 4 sunstrike coming in from the invoker He's still 300 gold away from that Dragon Fist with the Life Stealer Bomb inside of him. Surprise, Ryuboros! He does not have a Ghost Walk, and he does not have hope. He's going to die. Life Stealer not getting much farm in lane, though he is still level 7, 1,000 gold in the bank with the Power Treads. And he used that Puck to get himself in. Now Defect is going to put the wall up and glimpse back Slardar. You cannot kill this guy. Not yet. If he had a Blink Dagger, though, yeah, that would have that done it. Blink Dagger is going to be very, very soon, though. So Defect... Yeah, I mean, you got out that time, but maybe not next. Maybe not the next. Cakes and Smurf gonna go toe to toe on the bottom lane, perhaps. Though Cakes definitely respecting that Marana damage. It's only level one on the arrow, and it's unlikely to land in a one v one scenario. But still, Marana with the phase boots going for a gloves of haste. I expect that to be a lightning hammer, Maelstrom. I yeah, it should probably be Maelstrom. And now we have Pandago on the top lane and the sprinting Jago Billy. He has a blink dagger. He needs amplified damage. Well, he got the amplified damage, but he completely whiffs the crush. They see, no, they don't see defect. They body bump into him, but it looks like everyone's gonna back off. Invoker's up here as well. Has that four and four. Glimpse back into the kinetic field. Pandego is gonna get stunned by the Vicious Familiars. Bursts down in an instant. Now Jigabilly is gonna be forced to blink out Rioboros, lagging behind a little bit. Dragon Fist does not have that much mana. He throws the orb, but he doesn't have the coil. They need an open wounds. There it is. The Forge Spirits go up, but it's not gonna do anything at all, really. Rioboros is gonna get nuked down by Whitebeard as well as Exiled. The physical damage, the magical damage combination, a little bit too much. Now these Forge Spirits also going to drop and Denial just find themselves a couple of easy kills up on this top lane. E-Hug perhaps a little bit over aggressive, perhaps a little bit unprepared for the Marana ultimate. I mean it's level 8, you'd expect Marana to have an ultimate by then. If they had, uh, if they hit the crush on the Visage then obviously that fight would have gone a lot differently. But still Slaughter does not die, they lose the Invoker which really sucks. But uh, all things considered it could have been definitely a lot lot worse. And the top lane will be held as well in fortification, making sure that that is completely safe. And AA has hit the level 6 mark, the coveted level 6 mark for the Ancient Apparition. Cakes still sitting on the bottom lane. If he was there, I think it... Uh, yeah, they probably could have gotten 1, 2 kills in response. A level 9 Timbersaw will do that for you. He could very, very easily nuke down these very soft heroes of the Visage as well as the Disruptor, who he has a couple levels advantage over in health. If he lands one Timber Chain, they're already dropped down to about half of HP. It's pretty substantial, but Cakes still finding his farm on the bottom lane, 43 for 8, whereas the returning Smurf still 45 for 12. So Cakes, yeah, with the levels that he has been accruing, he's getting a little bit more and more of an advantage in lane. And now with an Invis Rune, possibly will look to open the door onto some aggression into some of the other lanes. Although, maybe not. Maybe not. Okay, fair enough. He just wants to chill. Slaughter's in the area, though. Jiggle Billy with a Blink Dagger wants to be aggressive. That's what you do when you have a Slaughter and you pick up a Blink Dagger this early. You pick it up, and then ideally you try to surprise your opponents with a Blink Crush and then get killed off of that. Unfortunately, that didn't really work. Uh, the first Blink Crush was a failure in the end. And now Dragon Fist is going to shatter from this one. He should be just fine, though. We had Jiggle Billy instead going to the bottom lane to farm. And in the meantime, it's actually Shadow Demon up topside. Two supports, killing off the, well, I guess, the third support. I would expect Jigabilly to not be down there free farm. I guess he does see a free lane. Whitebeard now looking to make a 3v1 fight happen. That's a little bit ambitious from him. Not too much of a punish, though. Although, Whirling Death as well as Timber Chain. He changed his mind. Jigabilly going to put the Amplified damage up. And there's the Infest. This range creep is going to pop soon enough. But here comes Dragon Fist with a three-man coil. 
the best damage out from Whitebeard. He's going to be safe under the shadow of the Moonlight. Top tower is under the coil fades, and it looks like everyone's going to live. Unfortunately, Ehug, I mean, they had an opportunity, a slight opportunity there to kill off that life stealer who kind of sprinted in all alone. Now Jigabilly's in a little bit of trouble. He's going to just narrowly dodge that arrow, kissing it on its way in. And Slaughter, not without, not with that blink, still cannot fight. Jigabilly's, like, constantly just getting outmaneuvered just by a couple of seconds. And then that means no blink crush, but he's going to go for it right now. Blink Intimidation. And fast blink back by Dragonfist, who has picked up blink out of his own. Exile on the top side, going to put into a bubble with the curse and sunstrike. This guy is so dead, unless he's going to live. It actually didn't do that much damage, but no, still the beatdown from Cakes is going to seal the deal onto the visage on the top side. I think the sunstrike missed, but uh, either way, that many heroes, you're probably not going to escape. So Ehug find another kill. Unfortunately, it is again on the Visage. So only the Visage has gone down. Lifestyle has been free farming. He's well on his way towards his armlet. Has the recipe and, well, he's in fact so well on his way that he could get it pretty much whenever the courier decides to deliver it to him. Marana actually going to go for a hand of Midas, I guess, feeling the fact that she has a lot of free time. Might as well accelerate the farm even more. Maybe they just want to take it in the late game and put the pressure onto Ehug for uh, starting, the, starting the fights earlier on. I mean, that's generally what you do. When, that's generally what you're saying when you're picking up Hand of Might. It's saying, I just want to farm. You can do whatever you want, but we will hold you off. And so far, 5 for 2 with a slightly, yeah, pretty superior late game on the denial side. I think the Murana is going to be comfortable with doing that. So, yeah, I don't mind this pick whatsoever. It's going to got to be Ehug making these fights happen. With the, blink, with the blinking slaughter, you would expect these fights to be happening. However, denial, one way or another, are successfully avoiding the fights that Ehug, they're trying to start. We gotta watch out for that Slardar and actually starting everything. And here comes Whitebeard with an armlet. He's gonna open up the wounds of I'm a Sheep. There's a stack storm onto Cakes, not moving either way. There's the Soul Assumption gonna kill off the Ancient Apparition, defecting a lot of damage. He is chilled up and he will go down. It's ultimately a one for one trade, support for support. But in the meantime, bottom side, Smurf is gonna go toe to toe with Jacobilly. You cannot win that fight, Mirana. He's gonna land an arrow and Slardar is actually gonna be forced to back off. But in the meantime, mid lane, looks like a life bomb has occurred. Cakes can drop uh, uh, right immediately. And now Riboro is gonna try to kill off Dragon Fist. Cold Snap, it will kill off the puck. However, he might trade his life for it. Soul Assumption onto the Invoker won't do it. 93 health survival. And it looks like the Familiars also will be unable to kill off the Shadow Demon. Jacobilly is gonna come right in. However, the stomps from the Familiar is gonna slow him down. Jacobilly just is getting walled off at every single one of his attempts. Got a feel for the guy. But Life Stealer ending up with a score of 202, and Marana in the meantime taking down a tier 1 tower. Denial still hold a 7 to 4 lead, and Jigobilly now might be in a little trouble. The Thunder Strike is a great tool at shutting down that blink from the Slaughter, though these Forge Spears still do a lot of damage. There's a lot of minus armor right now, and don't go in there, defect. Oh, that was close, but he does manage to avoid that Ice Ball. That uh, probably would have been followed up with Sun Strike. For, you, gotta, you gotta try it, at least, right? That's what you do as a Voker. You fire off the Sunstrike and hope it goes well. So, Cakes misses the Timber Chain in the mid lane, which I think he's thanking his lucky stars that he missed. If he went in there, I'm pretty sure he would just die. So, yeah, that was intentional. That was an intentional intimidation, Timber Chain. Dragon Fist, does he have his coil? Oh, you bet he does. Whitebeard on the front line still has a lot of armor, has a lot of HP with that armlet. And Denial, they're looking to hold this mid lane with their team fight. They have an Ice Ball coming in, and it's going to hit onto absolutely no one, though the Chilling Effect will get applied to the Life Stealer. It's not really going to matter too, too much. It's going to do, like, you know, 50 damage. Oh no, 50 damage. What do we do, guys? What do we do? Slaughter still not in the area. Jigobilly looking to farm up the bottom lane while the rest of his team holds the mid. You know, if they keep doing this, Ehug, they're not going to get this advantage. Denial with a Static Storm with the Coil on the Puck with the Initiation Advantage of the Mirana. They should be able to take it late game. And Ehug, they're being walled off. I mean, Cake's going to continue throwing Chakrams and stuff like that. But it's ultimately just a standoff in the mid lane. Gotta watch out for Defect's Glimpse though. Level 3 on that. Another Ice Ball going to come on in and Defect going to take that one straight to the face. No real follow up though. Actually no, Cake's wants in. Coil? No. Okay, mind games, dancing around, defect, gonna dodge a sunstrike, which I don't think was lethal. Nope, not even close. But all the while, Jigabilly on the bottom lane, he's just farming his pretty little head off. 
Wants to go for that BKB so he could be confident in his jumping in. So he won't be, have his wounds opened or get stunned by familiars or anything unpleasant like that. Will be able to run through the kinetic field. But on the top side, it's got to be Vera Burrows who's panicking right now. He has lights there right on his ass. Smurf is there as well. Force Staff back out. I mean, he's going to dodge his familiar stuns successfully. I mean, that's something. But he's dead. He's real dead. In the meantime, it's a Disruptor trade, of course, that will benefit to Denial in the end. Disruptor, rather expendable at th this point, whereas the Invoker for E-Hug, not so much. Dragon Fist going to go 1v2. He looks to take down Mande Pandego, and he is going to be successful in doing so. He's going to dodge the Crush and Jigglebilly as well. The Chilling Feet will land onto Dragon Fist, stunned up, and the Amplified Damage Jigglebilly trying to secure this kill. He is going to now try to run, change his mind. He's going to get the Crush and Dragon Fist as he blinks into it. But regardless, Puck is going to absolutely clean up everyone in the mid lane with a little bit of support from his friends. Tower gets denied, and E-Hug very, very far behind now. Cakes has wounds open. He is going to get Glimpse back? No. Glimpse not up. Glimpse uh, was used and didn't do anything, apparently. Alright, but either way, gotta land a stun to kill off that Timber Saw. Timber Chain is, uh, well, it doesn't really give a damn if you are going to open his wounds or not. Life's there pretty weak. He's probably going to be forced to base right now in Ancient Apparition plus Invoker. All right, Whitebeard. Let's see if you could uh, do some Matrix action on this uh, mid lane here. All right. Wouldn't be a proper game if we didn't have a long-ass pause. Taking stock of the game as it stands, E-Hug. Rather uh, unsuccessful with the Slardar pick. I would say Slardar has done absolutely nothing. Yeah, I think that's I think that's fair to say. Slaughter has been doing jack all this game. And that's not because that uh, it's, he's being played poorly. I mean, the Slaughter has tried constantly to get action happening, but just every time he goes in, he gets met with a phase shift or he's outnumbered or something like that. And the one death that he has was very close to getting the kill, but you know, very close isn't enough. Zero one zero on the Slaughter, and right now not really doing much of anything. And as he moves m more into the mid game, he's going to be doing comparatively less and less. Just because he's not getting anything, whereas Slaughter is a hero that does need quite a bit. And he's not getting it. Ice Ball. I really want this to hit just because of baller status. Oh my god, that was actually fairly close. Unfortunately, the Ancient Apparition doesn't know that, so he's gonna be, uh, he's gonna feel pretty bad about missing. But that's fine. I mean, Whitebeard is still pretty damn weak. You gotta throw another one. There has to be a way to get this life sealer kill. But E-Hug just going to chill for a little bit. Looks like everyone from Denial is going to just quickly base up. They have a Blink Dagger on Puck. They have a lot of core items up, and they have their ultimates. Disruptor ultimate being one of the key ones. Mirana ultimate to set up those fights. Also very, very important. And the life sealer with an armlet can, can and will go to town on the E-Hug side. Whereas E-Hug, I mean, they're not really waiting for anything in particular aside from Jigglebilly's BKB, and that's still a long ways away, assuming nothing on the Courier. There's nothing on the Courier. So Jigglebilly's BKB, although it will help him a great deal, it won't come for a very long time. Force Staff on Evoker has been up for a while. Shout even picks up Arcane Boots. It's not really going to help him too, too much. Timmersaw going to go for a Bloodstone. But hey, Bloodstone only works if your team's... or it only works well if your team is getting kills, and five kills not really conducive to a Bloodstone at the moment. Smirk for 1,600 gold, rather, uh, in his bank account. Has the Yasha, so he's going to be moving pretty damn quick, and he's going to go for the Manta style as well. Ice Ball going to come in, and the Blink Crush? Not going to happen. Jigglebilly is still hidden? No, I think they see him. <laughs> Slardar trying to be sneaky, but uh, again, trying to make aggression happen, but just walled off for, you know, whatever reason. Smurf smells something coming. He's going to move back. It's just Smurf. I don't know why I'm saying Smurfed, like a like a verb, but it's just Smurf. I don't know, but maybe it's because of the ED that's at the end of his name and I'm just putting them together. I have no idea. But either way, E-Hug sitting back in the mid game with a Slaughter, that's not what you want to do. I mean, Slaughter is a lot stronger with a BKB, to be fair. But uh, Life Sealer can easily go toe-to-toe, -to -toe, and now he's inside Dragon Fist. And Dragon Fist, he sees targets on the mid lane, Cakes. If he lands Silence and Coil, it's going to be a fairly easy kill on the Timber Sire, I would say. And here comes the pain. No. He's still thinking about it. He knows the Shadow Demon's there at least. So Cakes could get put into a bubble. It's a little bit of effective time for him. You know, burn out that duration of the Dream Coil, whatnot. Exiled in the meantime. Topside does get hit by an Ice Blast. But looks like Life Stealer is going to continue riding around in Dragon Fist, looking for opportunities. They definitely can get this uh, Timbersaw kill. Though, of course, they don't know about it.
Oh, now they can get it. Cakes? Why are they not going? I don't... Okay. Well, they're going to play it safe. And by safe, I mean very, very slow. But that's still okay. I mean, I guess their life skill isn't farming, but, you know, Smurf is farming. He's, well, he's happy on the bottom lane. Going to be receiving a little bit of support from his buds and the ice ball going to spot Dragon Fist. So there are no more secrets on this bottom lane. Rana has picked up her ultimate orb, though. She's getting quite a bit of gold with that hand of Midas. And now with the Puck Life Stealer, three heroes on the bottom lane. E-Hug, they need a response to this, or else their tower is going to continuously take chip damage. Shadow Demon, Slardar, it's a strong combination, but not nearly strong enough to handle these three heroes who are vastly out-leveling them, who have a lot more net worth. Just take a look at that right now. All three of the top on the net worth, they are right there. Defect going to get a glimpse back onto Cakes, right into the Static Storm, plus the Life Stealer Bomb. There they go. It took a little bit of time, but they finally got the Timber Saw. It was all part of the plan, guys. It was all part of the plan. On the back of that, they're probably going to look towards this mid-tier 1 tower. Ice Ball going to fly in. Apply the chilling effect to a couple of heroes, but uh, actually the Life Stealer is going to get hit pretty hard by that. Should be fine to take this one down, though. There's the Purge onto Defect. A little bit of damage there, plus Sun Strike can drop him very, very low, and the Purge won't do it. 30 HP. Wiper going to go now, open up into Rearboros, and Pandago is also on the way out. Dragon Fist has already used his coil. He does have a Cyclone, however, he is not willing to use it just yet. I think he should be retreating. Dust going to pop off. Pandago is still in a lot of trouble. He's going to throw out a Shadow Poison, but... Going to get juked out by Dragon Fist, picking up a double kill, and now Reboros on the mid lane. If his wounds get opened up, he might just die. He does have access to Ghost Walk and a Force Staff. Here comes Cakes. Instantly Whitebeard, though, opening up into him. There is nothing to shut down that Chimmer Chain. Dragon Fist is going to throw the orb, and it, he's going to jaunt to it. Cold Snap, though, punishing very, very severely. He's going to instead pop himself up to the air with the Cyclone. Ice Blast is going to fly through and hit onto Dragon Fist, but the elusive nature of Puck, he's going to take not much damage at all. In fact, the only thing he took was the uh, was the Ice Orb for now. Soul Assumption of Rio Burrows and the Force Staff out. Invoker, going to be fine for now. But all the while, you have to be asking, where is Jiggle Billy? He's laying into Smurf as we speak, but there's the Amplify damage being split out due to Mantis Style and the Scrave Chill and the Glimpse Back. Jiggle Billy is now stuck in the cage. It's a cage match that he didn't ask for, and he's going to go down. He would have been able to do so much if he was with his team on the mid lane, but instead, going for Smurf and, again, getting walled off. This Slardar is not having a fun game at all. Marana is going to get another assist from that. Yeah, Visage picking up that kill. Good teleportation support from Denial, protecting their Marana, which at this point is, for all intents and purposes, their hard carry. Although Life Stealer is getting pretty damn stacked as well, well on his way to his Assault Caress. And really, there's no response at all from Ehug. I mean, they have gotten, since I last checked, a Mithril Hammer and a Hand of Midas on AA. That is not going to win you the game, not by any stretch. Whereas the Mantis Style has been picked up from Marana. Plate Mail, Hyperstone onto the Life Stealer. Puck has gone for an Ultimate Orb of his own. Plus that Yule Scepter, which I think he just uh, got a couple more p parts to complete that one up. E Hug, they are 10 kills behind, but it feels like they're 20. 7,500 gold in favor of Denial, over 10,000 experience. And E Hug. This Jigobilly Slardar is actually just not doing anything for them. I mean, if they had another hero, maybe. But uh, he's, ha he's definitely having a little bit of difficulty in this game. Unfortunately for them, they do still have an Invoker. Invoker couldn't hold down the fort for, you know, several minutes, I'd say. Like, 30, 40 minutes, Invoker could just, you know, have an absolute blast. It's pretty much a field day for him. Especially when he's helped out by the Ancient Apparition Blast or, you know, Timbersaw Burst, something like that. The fact of the matter is that Denial just have more at the moment, and they're continuing to get more a lot faster than E-Hug. And E-Hug, they need to get these kills going, but 5 to 15, they've been at 5 kills for a very long time. Roshan still not being attempted by either side, but the AC and the BKB now up on the Life Stealer and Slaughter, respectively. Smurf feeling so confident on this bottom lane. He's going to back up Dragon Fist. Gonna keep chipping away at this tier two tower on the bottom side. And Dragon Fist, they came out jumping in on this actually. Or it looks like he wants to. Again, there's not much hard lockdown ex except with the uh, blinking Slardar. But again, Slardar, nowhere near this fight. He's gonna run out with Sprint and I guess try to go for Dragon Fist. Dragon Fist is playing like he has his entire team behind him, but well, I guess he does have the real powerhouses behind him. Marana, and here we go, Life Stealer Bomb. Reboros. Does have a four staff, which is going to help him quite a bit in escaping this, unless he gets tagged by an arrow. 
And there we go. Blink forward for the silence. Coil as well. Where's the life slither? He's going to phase shift out from the stomp. There is Whitebeard. Jigga Blaze going to pop the BKB, but the damage from Whitebeard is just so intense right now. Ice Ball going to come and not do too much of anything. Whitebeard going to lay into whoever he can get his hands on. Dragon Fist going to dodge the Sun Strike with the Yule Scepter. It's going to be Smurf getting the first kill. And now I'm a Sheep is also on his way out. Whitebeard going to get locked down. He is going to die. Dragon Fist going to jump forward for a double kill now. Cakes going to get laid into by Smurf, and it should be another kill. No, it's not, but a melee range arrow onto your Boros. He will get that kill at the very least. It's a triple kill for Dragon Fist. I don't know how Dragon Fist got that kill, but he got it regardless. And, well, Puck is struggling. He's panicking, and he's going to dodge out of one spell. He had Yule Scepter, but he's going to die. I don't think there was much of a... There wasn't much that he could have done out of that. But still deny. I'll take a 3v5, 3v4, and come out ahead. I mean, like, their Visage, their, their big team fight in the Static Storm, they were up top. They were just chilling. They were taking down towers. These guys playing PvE on the top side while the rest of their team play PvP. Not a big deal. 8 to 19, it was 3 kills to 4 kills ultimately. And a sh whole load of tower gold going the way of denial. 2400 on this disruptor. This guy is absolutely loaded. 1900 onto Visage after a Mystic Staff. Jesus, this is going to be like a 30 ish minute Shiva's Guard on a Visage. He doesn't even have the best score in the world. 4 2 3 is great, but. It's not like he's, I mean, it's two deaths, four kills, three assists. It's pretty damn good, but shit, that's a lot of gold on this Visage. And still, he's uh, not even near the top of the net worth chart. I kind of want to know what Disruptor's going to go for. Is there, a, is there a mech on this team? Have I just been, oh, there is a mech. Yeah, mech has been up for a long time into Exile. Yeah, there was no mech on the bottom side either. It was just Smurf doing a lot of damage, Whitebeard doing a lot of damage, and E-Hug without any response. And now I think Denial should be looking for Roshan. Ice Ball going to fly in. See that? Hey, there is no one in Roshan. And then they're just going to go straight into Roshan. Here we go. Arrow from Smurf, maybe? No, Whitebeard just going to man fight out. Sunstrike going to land. There's the open wounds on Roshan. Hoping to keep everyone alive. Ice Blast, Sunstrike already being used to spot it out. So there's no way that E-Hug can crash this party. There's going to be a free Roshan for Denial. Dragon Fist tanking that one up. Has finished his Sheep Stick. Does have the Yules as well. So we can effectively lock two heroes, at the very least, out of a fight for a very long time. And Marana, just with a casual Morbid Mask, actually. Then going to go for what probably is an MKB. Could be a Daedalus, but uh, I'm leaning more towards MKB at this point. Or both. Get both. Por que los dos, right? Once again, Denial going to look to chip out this bottom lane. With the additional disable of that Hex on the Puck, um, that team fight is going to be so much easier. Plus the Demon Edge, you know, 46 damage is nothing to sneeze at. Whitebeard has since not completed any items, but no, they're going to put one more hero on this lane. Breaking all the rules, Denial Esports. Like, we'll just put more heroes down here, and Slardar forced to teleport out from the Visage, who has completed his sub-30 minute Shiva's Guard mech on Visage. That's pretty absurd. Right, we're going to fly through the tower. Aggro is going to get pulled, but Dragon Fist going to jump right in with Whitebeard. Hex goes on to Cakes. Immediately gets put in the bubble, but Shadow even going to pay for that one with his life. Cakes going to try to chain out. That's not going to happen either. Denial pick up two for free, and with that, they're going to ride that wave right into the tier three. Ice Ball is going to come in a very small one. Looks like everything will hit on to Dragon Fist. He won't shatter from this one, but he'll still take a bunch of damage. Fortification will pop. Deafening Blast will get juked out by the phase shift from Puck. And then blink straight out. Mech is on the top lane. Visage is still playing PvE, but that's okay because the rest of his team is winning without him. 4v5 Dota, best Dota. And Denial, well, they're not going to take the tower. Everyone from E-Hug now up and available to fight. They're just going to fall back. They could play it slow. They've been playing it slow. It's like been E-Hug who had to have made things happen, but tell Denial got they got tired of waiting. They're like, if your guys aren't going to fight... We'll gladly take the fight to you. Picking off Timbersaw and Shadow Demon for free. Yeah, it's a it's a pretty good deal, I would say. And their Visage, you should probably, like... I think if Denial just group up as five, they could straight push and win a team fight. Assuming their Slaughter doesn't get, like, a three, four-man crush. That could be disastrous. But the way Denial have been playing so far in order to wall off that Slaughter, it looks very unlikely that's going to happen. Sheepstick being a big pickoff for Reboros and a... That's instantly responded by a basher. Disables, disables everywhere. Four staff into a sheep stick. Possibly the best way for E-Hug to get a couple of picks, but they haven't really been attempting that at all. 
I mean, with the Blink Slardar, again, you would expect that to be something that they would constantly be trying to doing, but Slardar is now trying to transition into a more late game role with the Armlet, as well as that BKB. Unfortunately for him, the Life Stealer has had the Armlet for like 15 and something minutes now, AC Basher. Life Stealer is going to be able to man fight Slardar with one hand tied behind his back. I think he has been doing that, actually. And now Dragon Fist. Holding that life stealer inside of him, looking for blood. And it looks like the blood is not going to be from a hero, but instead going to be in the form of towers. Fair enough, it's an easy tier 2 tower to take, why not just go for it? Or he could just be baiting a fight right now, the uh, E-Hug might not know where the life stealer is, but I think you should expect it to be in the puck right now. Or you should expect the life stealer to be in this area in some capacity. They're going to just sack the tier 2 tower, that I think is the correct decision. I mean, they know that they are behind right now, like by a large amount, and taking a fight when you're behind outside of your tier 3s in this situation, that's just asking to be punished. Question is though, are Denial going to let up? And it looks like the answer for now is no, they're going to jump forward, at least Dragon Fist is, Whitebeard getting hit with the Deafening Blast however, he does have the Aegis, however the Puck taking a lot of damage, he is not hit with the Ice Ball though, so he will be able to get mech'd up, he's dropping pretty low, but he's still alive, Amashib is going to take a lot of damage and will go down, Jigglebilly gets a big crush, but he's not doing any damage, in fact he's taking so much more damage than he's giving out, and the Armlet Toggle will save him for now, Sunstrike is going to go for someone, but it will miss, ultimately it is a 3 for 0 exchange, Dragon Fist cleaning up in the back end, killing off that Slardar, Timbersaw is still alive, Whitebeard dropping pretty low, but again, he has Aegis, there's Hex onto Cakes, is there any follow up, there's the Kinetic Field, Static Storm, no, well, Cakes still trying to go for Defect, but Smurf as well as Whitebeard now changing their attention towards that Timber Saw, and there's Stack Storm to deny that Timber Chain escape. They're going to transition all the way down to the bottom lane. Rebar is still alive, but really, what can an Invoker do against this? He's a great counter pusher, but will it be enough? Dragon Fist, Sunstrike will not kill off 30 HP, and he lives. Here comes Ice Balls of Death, and it will not hit. Nothing will hit. Cakes gets juked out. His Chakram is going to completely whiff as well. Whitebeard is going to lay into him, and that's going to get. Uh, it's actually going to be Hero Denial, fair enough. Arrow from the disruption of the Shadow Demon and Smurf finds one in the fountain. That's mid racks taken, that's bottom racks taken, and that is going to be, without a doubt, a GG call from E Hug. They're getting fountain farmed, there's the GG from E Hug. So ultimately, the best of two is a one game, one game to one game going either direction, obviously. I don't really know where I was going with that one, but it's 1 1. And I don't believe there's anything else. I'm kind of out of the loop right now. I just saw that I could cast this game, so I decided to do it. If you're on Dota TV and actually listening to my channel, then you are a little bit better than everyone else who's listening to the other channels. Of course, don't tell them that I said that. They might get a little bit angry at you. But thanks for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed this game. If you did, well, I'm on Twitch.tv slash Mike Loris. Mike Loris is my uh, name for everything. Twitter, YouTube is Mike Loris Gaming. Be sure to follow me on all that stuff, and uh, if you have any feedback, please let me know. I'm going to be looking to cast more of these games. A little bit rusty from uh, casting amateur tournaments like for the past 8, 9, 10 weeks or something like that. So as far as these higher level games, still got to get into the groove of that, but hopefully it will be a very fast transition. Thanks for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. GG.